Okay, this one is about bug reports again. Um, of course, they, they are useful to provide insight about the, the quality of the process, and this is the focus for, for this talk. Uh, we can say also that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bug reports are like oysters. Because this is a pattern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could be that I, I haven't <laughs> I haven't tried yet. <laughs> if you look inside you may find something valuable about the process, right? <laughs> So uh, I'm going to show you two patterns to help extract, extract information about the software verification process using bug data. And the first one is fixers and verifiers. Um, of course, developers assume specific roles in a team. For example, a fixer is a developer who fixes bugs. A verifier is a developer who verifies if fixes are appropriate. Okay, and there is a, uh, we can say that a quality engineering team is formed by verifiers who perform most of, of the verifications in the project, among, among other activities. Uh, and the roles should be taken into account in data analysis because, for example, you can judge, judge the, the, a verifier by the number of fix he contributed. Okay. So uh, our problem is to determine if there is a, a quality engineering team in a project and if there, there is who are the verifiers? Okay. So for the solution, you need to know for each developer the num number of times he changed the, the status to verify, that is the number of verifications, and the number of times he changed this resolution to fix it, that is the number of fixes. So the, the solution is first for each developer, you can put, compute the ratio between number of verifications and number of fixes, and you choose a threshold and assume that a developer is a verifier, if the ratio is greater than the threshold. The question, again, is how to choose a threshold. In this case, you can, for example, try all possible thresholds, okay, and use the threshold to compute the number of verifiers in the project and the percentage of verifications performed by verifiers. Then you plot this data in a XY plot. That's it. For example, if you choose ratio equals one, you find uh, a large team and a high percentage of verifications. If you choose five, you have a much smaller team and almost the same number of verifications, and so on. So how do I use this data to choose a threshold? The solution is to fit an arm to the data and find the elbow, okay? Because the elbow uh, offers a, a good trade-off between team size and percentage of verifications. So in this case, 15. Uh, and if the percentage of verification is high, you can say these verifiers, they form a quality engineering team, okay? Uh, of course, if developers are expected, expected to change roles over time, you can use a sliding windows. This could be another pattern. Okay. Um, and the second pattern is testing phases. Uh, immature projects, new features, and bug fixes are verified before, before being released to the public. And the verifications can occur interleaved with the fixes or after the fixes, just before the, the next release. This is what, what I call a testing phase. So uh, it's important to know if a project has or has not testing phase. Otherwise, it, you, you can get some wrong conclusions. For example, the time between fixing and verifying a bug can be related to the complexity of the bug or the fix. But if a project has a testing phase and all verifications are in the testing phase, the time has no special meaning. Uh, so our problem is to identify testing phase in the software development life cycle. Um, for the solution, you need the time of the verifications and optionally the release dates. Two solutions here. The first one is visual, plot the accumulated number of verifications over time. If possible, highlight the release dates. 
and find cliffs again, and the cliffs are testing phases. Second solution is numeric. So first, apply Klenberg's algorithm to verification times in order to detect verification bursts, that is, periods with intense verification activity. And second, there's no second, that's it. Uh, bursts are testing phase. <laughs> Uh, of course, th this is very important. If the number of verifications on, on a particular day is too high, they may be mass updates. So you have to use that other pattern, okay? Look out, look out for mass updates and remove them before looking for testing phases. Uh, and testing phases are less common in projects with quality engineering teams because they usually don't, don't have to fix bugs so they can verify every day. They don't need a special phase to do verifications. Okay, thank you.